to function in the prophetic. This is a, a prophetic uh, moment. And I believe that we are in the prophetic dispensation as well, or rather in the dispensation of the prophetic. We then need not to be left behind. So we need to pray for an unction to function in the prophetic. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, just lift up your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to quickly, those that are on YouTube, to copy the link and let us share it with our friends on Facebook and let them know that Apostle Ms. Mzwaket and Credit is live right now. And what is Apostle talking about today? Apostle is talking about the mystery of the blood of Jesus. The mystery of of the blood of Jesus. So go ahead and let somebody know that we are live right now. If you're watching on YouTube, I would love uh, and I would like you to quickly uh, copy the link. I've done the same. Uh, our team is sending it to people that uh, follow us. Make sure that you do that as well. So get your Bible and let's get straight into it. So what I'm going to teach you is so deep that I pray in the Holy Ghost. You hear me, and you hear what God is saying in his word. And one of the ways of receiving such messages is by completely humbling yourself. You know, if something comes against what you have known ever since you became a believer, ever since you believed, it kind of feels like an attack to what you have been standing on and as a result in most cases you won't check what the bible says you will activate the defensive mode and you will begin to combat that which was meant to deliver you because i believe that the rushes are delivered by knowledge not by funny things that's what the book of proverbs declares that by knowledge shall the rushes they just be delivered so every time God speaks to us through his word, his word brings light into our lives. The entrance of thy word brings light. Remember that? His word is like a what? A lamp unto our feet. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is what? The truth. So if God wants to sanctify somebody, he will do it through truth. Amen. Or rather the truth. And the truth is his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are people of the word, and we need to, I believe, we need to get to a point where we are so much serious about the word that we avoid in any way uh, typical preaching or topical preaching. Topical preaching is when I have an idea and I find a scripture that matches my idea. I don't know if, Peter, are they here? So if I have a scripture that matches my idea, instead of me exegeting, I will eisegete. So you're not, I'm not uh, exegete, but I'm eisegete. So, you know, if you exegete, it means you are pulling out. But if you eisegete, it means you are putting in. So I come with my own ideas because I have a topic already. 
and I'm putting my ideas, I'm trying to fit my ideas into the Bible. That was too deep. Why? Because I'm doing topical preaching or teaching. So I have a topic, so I find a scripture that matches what? My topic. And the danger of it is that the Bible can say what you want it to say. I can show you now where in the Bible it's okay to kill yourself. When you read the Bible in the book of Matthew, chapter 27, I believe is verse 5, the Bible says, and Judas went and hanged himself. And when you read the Bible in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 37, Jesus said, whatever you do, do it likewise. <laughs> you missed it already, right? When you read the Bible in the book of John 13, verse 27, Jesus said, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. Okay. I've just turned the Bible into what I wanted to say. And if you have no revelation, you will think, ah, he's deep. Because when you read uh, the book of John, chapter 13, and you read from verse 27, Jesus is talking to Judas. He says, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. <laughs> As if it's right. But you'll need to write, read the context of the text to understand where it's coming from. So it's always dangerous to have whatever we have, and when God speaks to us, we put what we have before him. If it does not match what we know, then we think it's not from God. That's why people pray for spiritual growth and they never grow. It's because from the first place, you were never supposed to and you were never meant to pray for spiritual growth. It's like going to the gym and you stand there and you start confessing, I'm fit, I'm fit. It doesn't work. You better lift. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. So spiritual growth comes through knowledge, comes through the word. So the more you know, the more you function. The less you know, the less you function. So I want to talk to you, brothers and sisters, today. And please forgive me in advance because I'll offend many of you. I want to talk to you about the mystery of the blood of Jesus. The mystery. Say with me wherever you are. The mystery of the blood of Jesus. You see, when I minister to you, it will be a revelation. But when it came to me, it came as a mystery. Are we together? So by the Spirit of God, I was able to fathom the realm of mysteries. Download this. So when it comes to you, it will come as a revelation. What I'm praying for is only understanding. Zoom, if you are here and you're ready, just go ahead and wave your hand. And let's ride on in the Holy Ghost. Let's ride. My daughter, no, Mtandazo. I don't like the kind of tone the people on Zoom are looking at me with. Okay, we have Musa. Musa and uh, somebody. Nelsi Majola is excited. Kiran is excited. There is hope in here. Messi Mkwanazi is also here. Tamari and family, they are also here. Listen, there is hope here. So let's ride on. Let's get up. Let's, let, let's go deeper. Amen. Now, this is what I want to say. You'll be brave if you don't leave after I say this. Then I'll minister to you. For years, we grew up in church. Uh, I've been saved for years. Grew up in church for years. And this is what I grew up hearing. And 99% of you, you had the same thing. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus. I apply the blood of Jesus. As a matter of fact, in our own languages, it sounds better. English does not do justice to it. Unfortunately, not, not, all, not, not everyone here can hear Tsonga. So if you could hear my language, I will speak it so you understand how deep this is. So we grew up being told by our grandparents, then from our grandparents to our mother, then from our parents, mothers, and then to us. And this is what we're told, that the blood of Jesus will protect you. As you go, I cover you, my child, under the blood of Jesus. So you leave the house knowing in your spirit that you are covered by the blood of Jesus. And the whole day, 
You won't fear any devil from nowhere. Why? Because you are covered under the blood. And as a result, it became, you see, when a lie has been told for a long time, the lie becomes the truth. The difference between a lie and a truth, or something that is true, is that a lie takes the elevator. Then the truth takes the stairs. So the lie always goes ahead of the truth, and the truth always catches up later. And that's if you wait for the truth. So we grew up hearing, I cover you. I cover myself. I cover my children. And you'll hear somebody saying you are protected by the blood of Jesus. But I want to tell you today that the blood of Jesus is not for protection. There is no scripture in the Bible. You can't find one. I told you now. Before you put on your defensive mode, let's get into it. We'll probably get into that scripture that you yourself are using right now. Because many a times we deal with the pretext of the text, not the context of the text. Okay? I love how quiet you are. It means I was, you were all, I was, also, I was always prepared and I was expecting this. Because if you responded differently, I would be disappointed. Because this is what I expected. The blood of Jesus. Men wrote it. You need to know what the Bible say. There is no scripture in the Bible, even a single scripture, that says the blood of Jesus is for protection. Or rather the blood of Jesus protected somebody. I know to come meet you where you are. Because right now, I told you, many of you are going to leave the broadcast. Why? Because you have known me for a long time and you are blessed by what I minister. You are blessed by the word of God. And you know apostle is deep. But now, it's, it sounds as if I'm about to teach heresy. It sounds as if I'm about to err. And that is because 99% of the preachers you met in your entire life have been singing this song. And now, a young man from South Africa comes and he tells you that there is no scripture in the Bible that says the blood of Jesus is for protection. You see, the enemy is not scared of any Christian Believer who's operating in ignorance. He loves it when believers are ignorant, especially in a group. You know, the Bible speaks about do not be ignorant of Satan's devices. And I would love to believe it's 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Praise the Lord, everybody. And the word device there, the Greek word is noema. No, Ima is where you get news, where you get mind. Meaning the enemy loves to play with your mind. When you read the Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11, it says put on the armor of God, the whole armor of God, so that you can be able to withstand the whales. The, way, the Greek word for whales there is actually the word, the word uh, methodia, which is the word methods. Meaning the enemy has methods. He's organized. He strategizes. The word strategia, the word strategy is strategia. Meaning he takes his time. When God asked the devil, Satan, in the book of Job 1.6, where have you been? He said, I've been moving to and fro. And Peter puts it this way. He says, the devil hoovers around looking for somebody to devour. So he's always at work. But how does he defeat you? He deceives you. So anytime the enemy wants to defeat you, he deceives you first. So let's go back to where it all began so that I make sense to you. Because in order for us to understand what I'm talking about, we have to go to the book of Genesis. When you deal with Genesis, you are dealing with the spinal cord of the Bible. When you deal with Genesis, you are dealing with the backbone of the Bible. You remove Genesis, the Bible won't stand. You remove Genesis, the Bible won't make sense. That's why it's called Genesis, which is gene is the beginning of time. As a matter of fact, before it was named Genesis, the scrolls, when, it, when there were scrolls, it was 
actually called the beginning. So the book of Genesis was called the beginning. Glory be to God. The takeoff of time. When you read the Bible, I've started ministering. When you read the Bible, in the book of Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, you omit chapter 3, you jump chapter 3, and you go to chapter 4. You'll see a man called Adam. Are we together? This man called Adam, he's in a garden of Eden. And right in the garden of Eden, Adam is unbothered. And as much as he's unbothered, he is having a fruit cocktail with God almost every evening. That is Genesis chapter 2. And when you look at the Bible, I need to say this so that even those that are slow hear me. When you look at the Bible, you realize that, or you'll discover, Peter, so to say, that there is no lightning that is striking. There is no thunder that is barking. Lion lays with the lamb. When I say lay, I mean like be is on the same vicinity place with the lamb. A bear is calm. Wolves are tamed. Big fish swim with small fish. Big birds fly with small birds. That is Genesis chapter 2. But now if you jump Genesis chapter 3 and you go to Genesis chapter 4, lightning is striking. Thunder is barking. Lion is now feeding on the sheep. Bear is no longer calm no more. Wolves are no longer tamed. Then what happened? What led to this confusion? For you to find an answer, you need to go to the book of Genesis chapter 3. The book of Genesis chapter 3, or title my message, The Birth Date of Sin. But I'm not preaching, I'm ministering. I want us to go to the book of Genesis chapter 3. It will make sense. It will make sense. I love how everybody is paying attention. It is in the book of Genesis chapter 3, and I want us to read verses 1. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now the serpent was more subtle than any... Now we are about to hear about what happened in Genesis 3 that messed us all up. Hallelujah. I want you to be so much serious about the word of God that you don't take any of the things that we are going to read for granted. Amen. Say glory somebody. Glory. Let's find out. What really happened in Genesis chapter 3? Amen. Yep. Now the serpent was more subtle. I'm sorry to say this, but the Bible opens by saying, now the serpent. You see, the devil, before he deceives you, he wants you to believe he's not the devil. <laughs> they, they missed it, right? You know somebody is deceived by the devil. When the devil is at work in their lives and they don't see that the devil is at work. You know, you know the enemy has messed up somebody when he's able to make somebody believe that the devil does not exist. You see, the Bible says now the serpent, that's Genesis. But when you go to the book of Revelation, the Bible calls him the dragon. Same devil, but takes on different characters. He can come as a serpent. But there are times where he shows his true nature. He becomes a dragon. The Bible calls him chief of liars. The Bible calls him 
the father of lies. Peter, the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. The Bible calls him Satan. The Bible calls him thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Well, that's my Bible. Same devil with different names. He knows exactly what to do to get to you. I don't know about you, but also in the book of Isaiah, the Bible calls him son of the morning. So sometimes he might appear as what you prayed for. Just to intercept what you have prayed for. I don't know if you had it. Let me not waste much time. Let's go straight to it. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. He was more subtle. He knows what to do. <laughs> Read. Now the serpent was more subtle yes, than any just continue. Let's go. Uh -huh. than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. Uh -huh. and, he, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Mm. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Read verse 13, we'll explain the rest. Verse 13. Yes. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. Read, Read 14. Verse 14, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, mm. and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Mm. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Now in Genesis chapter 4, when I started, I said, if you read the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, I'm not really much moved by chapter 1, but chapter 2, we see man having cocktail fruit, fruit cocktail, so to say, with God. Man is unbothered. But in chapter 4, man is on the run. Hallelujah. Man is on the run. Lightning is now flashing. What really happened? The problem happened in Genesis chapter 3. And I want to cut the story short. This is where man fell. This is where man sinned. When you read the Bible, you realize that the Bible says we all have sinned. And we fell short of the glory. But the question is, what time did I see him? When did I see him? The answer is in Genesis chapter 3. Hence, I said, if I was preaching, I would have message or titled my message, The Birth Date of Sin. The answer is in chapter 3. So, because we all came from Adam, as a result, we inherited the sin that Adam rather committed, introduced to the world. And from Genesis chapter 4, to the book of Revelation, last chapter. God has been trying to bring back men. Bring back men. Rather, God wanted to redeem men. That's, not, that's the word I'm looking for. Amen. Now, we see it in the book of Leviticus. We see it in the days of Moses. And let me pass by there because I want to get somewhere. But it is very important for you to understand what I'm about to say. Then after Genesis chapter 3, man is driven out of the Garden of Eden. Man is on the run. Man is no longer calm. Man is no longer settled. Cain kills his brother Abel. God comes back and he says, you know what? It is not just him speaking, but his blood. Somebody say the mystery of the blood. And God is specific to Cain. He says, the blood of your brother 
is crying out. It's crying out. What is it saying exactly? It's speaking vengeance. It wants revenge. So that's what the blood of Abel was saying. Remember that. So here the Bible is telling us that the blood has a voice. If I was on an Easter season, I would have titled my message spiritual go there. No, no, let me not go there. Let's continue. We then see in the book of Leviticus a lot happening. But we can't get to Leviticus unless we pass by Exodus. It will make sense. Just be patient with me. In the book of Exodus, we see God speaking to Moses. And I would love to believe that it's Exodus chapter 12. And you read from verses 11. Let's read it. Because this is where the era starts. Please be patient with me. Just give me nine minutes max. From there, it will make sense. It will just come together. I don't want to rush this one. Please read. Exodus chapter 12, verse 11. Yes. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat, in, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt of this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token. Now, verse 13 says what? You need, you need, to, you need to take your time there. Mm -hmm. And the blood shall be to you for a token. I'll and the blood shall be to you for a token. Your vision might be saying, and the blood shall be a sign. Right. King James 1611 approved says, and the blood shall be to you for a what? A token. A sign. Upon what? The houses where, where ye are. are. And when what? And when I see the blood. When I see the blood. Somebody holler when I see the blood. When I see the blood. What will happen? I will pass over you. Come on now. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. Uh-huh. Meaning death shall not hit you. Uh-huh. When I smite the land of Egypt. When I smite the land of Egypt. Uh-huh. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Uh -huh. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. And we have been doing that, uh-huh. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Uh -huh. Seven days shall ye Read eat. verse 29, please. Verse 29. Yes. And it came to pass mm -hmm. that at midnight mm -hmm. the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. From the firstborn of Pharaoh uh -huh. that sat on his throne. My God. Unto the firstborn of the captive. My God. That was in the dungeon. Uh -huh. And all the firstborn of cattle. My goodness. Now let's break that down. You may be seated. Here in the book of Exodus, this is where the era starts. We see God killing the firstborns of the Egyptians. But the Israelites were not harmed. And if we follow, we then come to a point where we see that the reason why they were not harmed is because God had told them what to do. He told them to take the blood of the lamb, put it on their doorposts, and the blood shall be a sign, shall be a token, that when the angel of death passes by, the angel will not enter their house. Now, we have God who's about to release an angel of death, right? Right? I usually joke and say God is about to release Abaddon. We all know who Abaddon is in the book of Revelation. The angel of destruction, right? That's the baddest angel. Now, I usually joke saying that, you know, Abaddon. But then again, the children of Israel are told in advance 
what they must do. You take the blood, you put it on your doorpost. And when I see the blood, I shall pass. Quickly go to Romans 6.23. Let me marry some scriptures here. Romans 6.23. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23. It will make sense, yes. For the wages of sin is death. Now, watch this. Kalida Barusha Takabaya. Please be seated. For Please the be seated. Please be seated. Thank you, my daughter. So the Bible tells us in Romans 6, verses 23, that the wages of sin is death. The reason why, from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, when we read, we don't see death. When God said to Adam, the day you eat, you shall surely die. He was not talking about the physical death. But Adam did die in Genesis chapter 3. Because it was the day sin was introduced. So death does not have power until sin shows up. What that means is there is no death without sin. So what gives death power and authority is sin. So if you want to deal with death, don't attack death. Attack sin. Because death is the shadow. Sin is the real thing. So you cannot take my shadow thinking you are taking. So what leads to death is sin. No wonder why the apostle asked and said, Oh death, where is your sting? If I look at a bee and say, oh, bee, where is your sting? It's because a bee is not a bee without its what? Its sting. So death is powerful because of its sting called sin. But if I remove sin, death is powerless. Say glory, somebody. So in the book of Exodus, you, you, you are going to hear me. Just give me time for three more minutes, I promise you. In the book of Exodus, the children of Israel are told the angel of death is about to pass by. Amen. But I want you to put blood as a sign and as a token. You see, we always say the Old Testament is a shadow. And the New Testament is the reality. The Old Testament is a promise and the New Testament is the fulfillment of the promise. So whatever God is doing in the Old Testament, he's doing it in a shadow level. But when we get to the New Testament now, God is manifesting it. Amen. Glory be to God. We see the ark man was one. One accord, one mind, one spirit. And God said man is one. Let us go down and confuse them. And the Bible says they were given different languages. We see that in Acts 2 verse 1, on the day of Pentecost, men was one. The Bible says they were in one accord, in one spirit. And the Holy Ghost came down and gave them tongues, tongues of fire. And they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. It was not our first time to see God coming down to give men different languages. But in the Old Testament, it was happening in the shadow level. Are you guys here or I'm talking to Peter? It was happening in the shadow level. But in the New Testament now, it's manifesting. We see Moses now, when the children of Israel were beaten by a snake, he took a snake and he hung it on a pole. And whoever looked on the Kalida Barusha, the Bible says the person was healed. And in the New Testament, Jesus is hanged on the cross. Are we together? So, all I'm saying is, uh, we see this is uh, a shadow. A man called Abraham, who's the father of faith, he's asked to sacrifice his son. But when he is there, the son is asking, Father, behold the wood, behold the fire, behold the knife, but where is the sacrifice? Imagine the sacrifice asking, Where is the sacrifice? And Abraham answers and he says, my son, God shall provide himself a lamp. That was a prophecy. 
That's why when John in John 1 29 saw Jesus, he said he is the lamp of God that takes away the sins of the world. Notice if you may, he didn't say he is the lamp of God that protects the world. I'm, I'm going to come there. I'm going to come there. So let's go back to uh, Exodus. So they take the blood and they put it on their doorsteps. Remember the wages of sin is death. But sin is only scared of one thing. Let us uh, go to First John. I think we, we, we have a long way today. I didn't think we were going to go there, but let's go. First John chapter 1 verse 7. Let's hear what the Bible, let's hear what is able to deal with sin once and for all. It is not, Father, forgive me, that gets you forgiven. Let's hear. First John chapter 1 verse 7. Yes. But if we walk in the light, yes. as he is in the light, yes. we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, uh -huh. cleanses us. So what cleanses us? The blood of... Cleanses us from what? From, from all sin. Uh -huh. From all sins, we are cleansed by what? The blood of Jesus Christ. We are cleansed by the what? The blood you, of you, Jesus you, you Christ. You better say it. We are cleansed by the what? The blood of Jesus but Christ. But it cleanses us from what? From, from sin. From all sin. But Romans 6, 23 says the wages of sin is what? Yes. What cleanses us from sin? The blood. Okay, let me put Hebrews there. Put Hebrews 9, verse 22. We, we, we'll get there. We'll get there. Let's check 22 first. I'm, I'm not sure, but let's check 22 first. Hebrews, Hebrews. chapter 9, verse 22. Yeah. And almost all things uh -huh, let's go. are by the law, uh -huh. purged with blood, uh -huh. and without shedding of blood uh -huh. is no remission. Okay, what version is that? That's King James. King James Do you have any other version, NLT or something, you on the computer there? Put it there. What vision do you have? You only have King James. Just change, put another vision. We are lo not looking for King James. What other vision do you have? Just put American, it's still okay. Whatever that you have, just put it there. And read it out loud. What does it say? Hebrews 9.22. That's correct. And according to the law. According to the law. I may almost say. Uh-huh. All things are cleansed with blood. All things are cleansed with what? With blood. That's why you have people in Africa using bloods of what? Bloods of chickens. Mm -hmm. And when you find them using blood, they say we are cleansing ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's because even in the Bible, the Bible speaks about, read it again. I want these people to understand that there is no way in the Bible where there is a scripture that says the blood of Jesus is for protection. Mm -hmm. We grew up hearing, I cover you. Mm -hmm. I cover my children. I'm protected by the blood. But that is unscriptural. It sounds good and you're thinking the devil is scared of it because, you know, it sounds powerful. But it is not scriptural. So if it is not scriptural, where does it come from? And the, how does it help you in your walk with God? You can't shoot the enemy in blanks because the sound you're thinking is being hurt. The enemy thrives in the ignorance of believers. That's why I always say the highest level of deliverance is not when one is rolling on the ground. It's when your ignorance is confronted. Amen. By knowledge, the just shall be delivered. Amen. Please read it in American Standard Version. And according to the law, yes, I may almost say, yes, all things are cleansed with blood. All things are cleansed with what? With blood. Uh -huh. And apart from shedding of blood. Apart? Come on. Apart from shedding of apart. blood. Did you hear that? Amen. It says apart. There we go. Let's go. Uh -huh. And apart from shedding of blood, uh -huh. there is no remission. There is no remission. Let me quickly find my own here. Do you have another vision? NIV. I want the one that says it's no forgiveness of sin. NIV. Okay. Quickly. Let's go. Bruce chapter 9, 22. That's correct. In fact... The law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. The law requires that everything must be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood. And without the shedding of blood. There is no forgiveness. There is no forgiveness. I will read mine. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Meaning when the blood comes... It comes to deal with sin. 
there, there it is there. Are, are we together, church? I, I, I don't think I'm, I'm with somebody here. The way the, the people are, are, are looking here. Uh, are, are we together? Are we together? Uh, let me go deeper. I'll come back here. So the blood cleanses us. The blood, I will put it like the old preacher. The blood washes us. And as long as there is no sin, because the blood fights sin, there is no death. So God is saying tonight, midnight, there will be an angel of death. But as for you, I want you to put the blood on your doorsteps as a sign, as a token. Not for protection. As a sign. Then when the angel began to pass, the Egyptians did not have the blood. They all died. But in their dying, what you don't understand is, when it came to the children of Israel, when the angel of death was passing, the angel of death could not pick up their sins. Oh, you missed it already. You missed it already. Remember, the blood washes us, cleanses us from sin. Without sin, there is no death. For death to be alive and to be active, sin must be there. But what can deal with sin? One thing, the blood. That's why whenever they sinned in the Old Testament, you will see them take what? A lamb. And they will go and do what? Give it to the priest. And that lamb will be what? Killed. And the blood will be used to what? For forgiveness. You are the only Christian in our time that uses the blood for protection. In the Old Testament, nobody has ever used blood for protection. Every time you saw the blood, it was because somebody was going to ask for forgiveness. You see, look, look, look at their faces. I know. You see, the, the, the least you can do, like, like I told you, years ago, I've, I've been fought years ago because of what I'm telling you now. So I'm, I'm used to it. And I didn't want to talk about it. The Holy Spirit prompted me to talk about it. Is because the days we are in, the days are dark. Amen. It's either you are in truth or you are not in the truth. Amen. And you can't play with it. Amen. Just because you are under culture, Amen. it does not mean you are under truth. Culture has an expiring date. Truth is eternal. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Culture is frozen success. What used to work then or something that thought People thought worked then that did not work. That thing will work for you. So in the Old Testament, from Genesis to Malachi, you don't see anybody using blood for protection. Let me give an example you understand. In the days of Job, when the devil said to God, when God said, have you noticed my servant Job? And the devil said, ah, that one, because God said he is blameless before me. The devil said, he is because of your hand of protection. Amen. He didn't say he is because of your blood. So if the blood of Jesus covers us in the New Testament for protection, what protected those in the Old Testament because Jesus had not yet died? So it means all along God was not with them and God was not able to protect them. No, I love your faces. I love them. Yeah, no, no. Just give me time. Somebody say, now I get you. Listen. Don't even be focused on me. Focus on scripture. Focus on what the scripture says. Like I asked for one scripture. So far, so good. That you know. That says the blood of Jesus protects us. One scripture. I know you're thinking Revelation 12 will go there. Don't worry. Now. So, as we see here, the angel of death could not enter because of the blood. What does the blood deal with? Sin. Where there is no sin, there is no death. For the wages of sin is death. So if I remove sin, there is no death. But how can I remove sin? By the blood. So if I put the blood, death has no power. Because blood conquers sin. Are we together? So now, when the angel passed, death could not enter. Why? Because the blood had covered their sins. They were not perfect before God. We know them. They were mamaras, these ones. But how come the angel of the Lord? Listen, they were not protected because they were Israelites. 
Hence, God never said, because you are my people, when I come, I will save you. He said, put the blood. Why? Because the blood will be able to say, death, you cannot enter here because sin has been conquered. So if you are an Israelite or you are an Israelite and you did not put the blood, death will have entered. So what now pushed death was the blood. But how did the blood push death? By conquering sin. Because the wages of sin is death. Does that make sense to you? There is a scripture that people love to quote. Way in the book of Hebrews 12, 24, I believe. That the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. And they use that as it speaks protection. No! For us to understand what does the blood of Jesus say, or what is the blood of Jesus saying, we need to understand what is the blood of Abel saying. Because the Bible there does not say the blood of Jesus speaks better things than all bloods. It says than the blood of Abel. So we then need to know what is the blood of Abel saying. And here I'm not talking about uh, you know, spiritual hematology. Because if I was talking about spiritual hematology, I would have said, right? What was so special about Abel? That his blood was compared to the, that the blood of Jesus was compared to the blood of Abel. Not even the blood of Enoch. Not even the blood of Elijah. Not even the blood of Moses. Not even the blood of Samuel. Not even the blood of Isaiah. Yet Abel never healed any headache. Abel never prayed for anybody. Abel never preached to anybody. But his blood is compared. If I was in spiritual hematology, then we will bring a revelation and say, because number one, he died for not sinning. Okay. He died. He didn't do anything wrong, but he was killed. When you look at Jesus, he didn't do anything wrong, but he was killed. Abel was killed by his own brother. Jesus, according to the book of Revelation, he was killed by his own brothers. That's why the Bible says he came to his own. His own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. Are we together? When you look at Abel, Abel was not married. And when Jesus died, he was not married. <laughs> Glory be to God. When you look at Abel, he pleased God. And Jesus pleased God. But still, both died. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's why when Jesus comes, you need to understand, because the birth date of sin is in Genesis 3. When Jesus comes, Paul says he is the second Adam. Why will Jesus be called the second Adam? It's because the second Adam was seduced by sin. But the first Adam, the first Adam was seduced by sin. But the second Adam is here to defeat sin. Power was lost in the Garden of Eden. Jesus, his last prayer, he was in the Garden. When Jesus resurrected and the angel was talking to him, the Bible says, and the women got into the tomb and found one angel on top of the stone. Jesus was in the garden. We see him, his last prayer, he's in the garden where power was lost. When he resurrects, he's in the garden. It is not a mistake that the Bible is telling us that. Uh, I, I wish I was talking about that, but I'm not talking about that. I'm trying to show you here where it is all coming from and how it is coming together, church. Oh, Lord. I told you, it is very deep. It is very deep. Somebody is really fighting right now because, I mean, you grew up hearing that. Everybody has been saying that, but that does not make it the truth. Let's go further. Let's go, let's go further. So, as we move, we, we are done with Exodus. We see now in Leviticus that now the blood is used for remission of sins, Amen. for cleansing. Because this is what happened. Pay attention now. God is on this side. And man is on this side. Now, there was a bridge between man and God. It will make sense. But the day sin was introduced, sin built a wall between men and God. 
that when men started calling unto God, God could not hear men because of sin that built a wall. When Jesus came, he did not come worried about our protection. That's why when men called, God could not save men. God could not heal men because men, there was a wall. Isaiah 59, verse 1. And I would love another vision, please. You can read it in King James. Let him get another vision quickly, even if it's NIV. Isaiah 59, verse 1. It has to be very fast. I, I think I need to leave now. And uh, I need to cancel this and let everybody believe what they believe. 59, but you can read King James first. And let's do it quickly. And then we go on another one. Yes. Isaiah 59, verse 1. Correct. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Uh -huh. So his, his hand is not short that he cannot save. Uh -huh. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Neither his ear blocked that he cannot hear. Uh -huh. Amen. That's true. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. But your iniquities, what is an iniquity? Your sins. And your sins have hid his face. Your sins have hid his face. From you. From he, you. That he will not hear. He will not hear. But now what hid his face? Your sins. That's why when Christ comes, this is so powerful. What I'm about to say is so powerful. Listen, what I'm about to say is so powerful. Peter, can I use this statue as a, please get it, this uh, piano guy. What is this? Saxophone what? Oh, this one is a saxophone. That one is like a, a something. Can I use these statues? Are they visible, Reverend? Amen. Are they visible? Thank you, Reverend. This is men. If you miss it here, you will need to start from Sunday school. That's why the Bible speaks about babies in the Lord. And people think babies has to do with how long one has been saved. It has to do with your maturity, the amount of weight you have, the truth you know. So you can be born again for 50 years, yet you're a baby. That's why he said, when I came back, I thought you'd be feeding on solid food. But you are still stuck in the basic principles of salvation. Amen. That is in the book of Hebrews. This is men. This is what? Amen. Example. This is God. It's an example. Right? I need to say that this is example. This is God. Then this is men. Now, men had access to God. Until sin came and built a wall between men and God. Then God in Isaiah 59 says, my hand is not short that I cannot save you. My ears are not blocked so that I cannot hear you. But your sins, your iniquities have separated me and you and have built a wall between us. And as a result, my face is hid from you. Not because I don't want to come to you, but because of sin. Now, you and I, we are on earth. And there is a wall between you and God. On earth, the Bible calls the devil the prince of this world. That means it actually, sin gives the devil a chance to mess up with humanity. Because man does not have access to God. And not that because God does not want to hear man, but sin. Isaiah says, I hate, I hate sin. So the only thing that separates man from God is sin. Are we together? Watch this. Now, men here cannot get to the other side. Then Jesus comes. I believe that's 1 Timothy 2.5. There is one, only one mediator between men and God. The man Christ Jesus. So when Jesus comes, the Bible says, He who knew no sin became sin. But how did he become sin? He became sin by dying for us. By taking on our blame. Are we together? Now, instead of sin being between here, or what man does... Because before sin, it was man and God. Please hear me here. But when sin now was introduced, sin blocked man from having access to God. So when Jesus died, his blood dealt with sin, the bridge that was closing the wall. And himself, instead of what you do, he became a mediator between man and God. So it is not what you do that pleases the Father. 
but it is what the mediator does, did, that pleases the Father. So that's why the Bible says Christ Jesus is the only way to God. For there is one way to God. Forget about whatever they tell you, saying there are many ways, this religion. No, 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 no. Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So because of Jesus, we have the truth, we have the way, and we have the life. Does that make sense? I believe, uh, I believe that's Nolita. Nolita is hearing me. Listen, for the first time, I have somebody hearing what I'm saying. For the first time, and I'm excited. Listen, so Christ Jesus now, it is not about what you do this side that gets you approval. It is about what Jesus does. So God is no longer looking at you, but God is looking at Jesus. That's why we are called the righteousness of God by Christ Jesus. You remove Christ, we are not the righteousness of God. Just put, just put 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. I've never seen Kiran. I've never seen Deborah, Bernard Alali. So quiet. It's my first time. <laughs> it will get there. Musa Maluleke, it will get there. Read for us. Quickly, please. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Can I have the first apostle? 21. Verse 21. Thank yes, you, apostle. For he hath made him to be seen for us. He has made who to be seen? Christ. Uh-huh. For who? Who? For, for us. For us. Uh-huh. Who knew no sin. He didn't know any sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That we may be made the righteousness of God in him. Listen to this. That's why verse 17 says, if any man be in Christ. So I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Uh-huh. Are we done with that scripture? Yes. yes so Apostle. you see that you are actually not pleasing God by anything you do. Are we together? But you please God by having faith in Christ. Amen. And by having faith in Christ, he, that's why Paul says, I can do all things. The Holy Ghost strengthens your walk in God. Hallelujah. You find yourself hating sin. Not because you can't sin. Because the Holy Ghost in you strengthens you. That's why the Bible says, if you say you have not sinned, that is now 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, going to 9. There is no truth in you. But if you acknowledge that you have sinned, God is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you by the blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus all along was to put men and God together once again. Because sin has separated men from God. And we see that in Genesis 3. Because men and God used to be in one place. God used to visit men. But after Genesis 3, man is on the run. Why is man on the run? Sin. Why are people dying? Sin. But Jesus came to deal with what? Sin. Let's go to the Hebrews 24. No, Hebrews 12 verse 24. The one that people love and say, you know. The blood of Abel, the blood of Jesus is speaking better things. And those things are many in plural. Read it. If you can do NLT in it, that will be good. What is, uh, is YouTube here or what's happening? Uh, I, I feel YouTube today, they're like, Apostle, I, not today, please. Uh, we, we know you to be a, a very deep man, but today you, you are dealing with us. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. What vision is that? NLT, Apostle. NLT. Yes, Apostle. Okay. You have to come to Jesus, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and people, and to the sprinkled blood, which graciously forgives instead of crying out for vengeance, as the blood of Abel did. What is that vision? NLT, Apostle. Do NIV. Do NIV, NIV. quickly. Mm -hmm. To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. That's what we need. And to the sprinkled so blood. So it says what? To Jesus. People pay attention. Don't mm -hmm. just he wait to hear what I'm going to say. Hear the Bible. You see, that's, that's what I'm, I'm telling you. You err because you take what somebody's saying and leave the Bible here. Hear what the Bible is saying. Amen. Judge what I'm saying using the Bible. Amen. Compare notes. 
Amen. The Bible says there were guys called the barbarians. These guys waited for Paul to preach. And every time when Paul preached, the Bible says they looked in the scriptures to see if what he was telling or saying was actually true. Amen. You must be able to do the same. Amen. Let's go. To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. Uh -huh. And to the sprinkled blood. To the sprinkled blood. That speaks a better word. That speaks a better word. Than the blood of Abel. Uh -huh. To see to it that you do not refuse him uh -huh. who speaks. Uh -huh. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth. Okay, let me, let me find a, a prophetic vision for it. And I pray, uh, Mr. KB, you might have it there. Um, how come you... Okay. You read NLT. Yes, Apostle. This is what my NLT is saying. I don't know what NLT you read. This is NLT. You have come to Jesus, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and people. And to the sprinkled blood which speaks of forgiveness instead of crying out for vengeance like the blood of Abel. So the blood of Abel cries what? Vengeance. Uh -huh, Sister Beverly is here. So the blood of Jesus there, it is explained what it is saying. It says it speaks of forgiveness. Amen. So when I say the blood of Jesus speaks, I need to know what is it saying. The Bible says it says forgiveness. So meaning every time the blood of Jesus is speaking, it's speaking forgiveness. Amen. Than the blood of Abel that is speaking vengeance. Amen. Nowhere where it says protection. Amen. It is in the Bible, people. Amen. There is no scripture. Let's, let's go deeper. Let, 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 listen, let's go deeper. Say let's go deeper. Let's, go deeper. let's hear what Peter says. The first Peter. I believe it's one nine. Oh, just do one nine here. I'm not sure quickly. Apostle, the book of First Peter, chapter one, verse nine. Nineteen. Nineteen. Yes. It reads. But with the precious blood of Christ, uh -huh. as of a lamb without blemish uh -huh. and without spot. Now, the Bible speaks about the precious blood. Why would Peter just all of a sudden talk about precious blood? Let's hear what he says in verse 18. Verse 18. Uh -huh. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, uh -huh. as silver and gold, uh -huh. from your vain conversation, uh -huh. received by tradition from your fathers... Uh -huh. but, verse, but 19. Uh -huh. verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ. So we were, mine says, knowing that you were not ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers. But who are these forefathers? It goes back to a a Adam. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. So he says, we were bought not of silver and gold because these are perishable things. But with the precious blood. But what is the Bible addressing the sin? Elijah never prayed for the blood to protect them. The disciples never called on the blood to protect them. Paul never called on the blood to protect him. Why are you calling on the blood to protect you? It sounds good, but there is an error. Oh my God. Can you do, uh, I, I, I have so many things in my spirit to say, but I feel I'm, 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 I'm on my own right here. Should we, should we continue or not? Let's hear how Jesus, his blood did what to the church. Acts 20, 28. This used to be my favorite scripture. Acts 20, 28. The book of Acts 20, 28. This used to be my favorite scripture, uh, Brother Peter. Chapter 20, verse 28. Because this scripture talks about the Holy Spirit and the blood in the same uh, verse, so you hardly find that in the Bible. Uh -huh, let's go. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock 
over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, uh -huh. to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So he purchased the church with what? With his own blood. He doesn't say he protected the church. When Jesus died in John 19 and you read 21, it says it is finished. The word it is finished, it is the word tetelestai. Tetelestai means you have been bought. You are no longer slaves anymore. Because God wanted, us, wanted to rescue us from the eternal punishment. It was not so much about protection. Let's go to the favorite one that they love. Revelation 12 verse 11. Uh, let's start from verse 7 so they understand it nicely. And uh, I believe, listen, I have so much to say, but I'll just, I'll just, I'll, I pray God will guide you. The book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the mm. lamb. And I by the word. Mm -mm. Listen to your man of God. We start from verse 7 and we go down. Yes. Thank Revelation you. chapter 12 verse 7. That's more like it. And there was war in heaven. There was war in what? In heaven. Uh -huh. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Where was the war? In heaven. Where was the war? In heaven. Who was fighting? Michael and his angels. Uh -huh. Fighting what? Let's go. They fought against the dragon. Uh -huh. And the dragon fought and his angels. But where was this war? In heaven. Thank you. Uh -huh. And prevailed not. Uh -huh. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, uh -huh. and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, uh -huh. and his angels were cast out with him. Uh -huh. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, uh -huh. Now is come salvation. Now is come what? Salvation. Uh -huh. and, and we know how salvation come. Uh -huh. And strength. No, no, we know how salvation come. Yeah, salvation is through Jesus. It's by Jesus. Let's go. And strength. Uh -huh. And the kingdom of our God. Uh -huh. And the power of his Christ. And the power of what? His Christ. Uh -huh. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, uh -huh. which accused them before our God. So there was a problem. He used to accuse them. Meaning there was something that he will use against them before God. That is powerful, church. That is powerful. I can't accuse you if I have nothing on you. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Before God, day and night. He used to do it two times a day. Let's go. And they overcame him. And they overcame him. And they, not and you shall. And they overcame him. And they, uh-huh. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. But now they overcame him What? Because, let's break it down. War in heaven. I'm going to be quick here. Amen. Michael, the devil. Michael is with his angels. The devil is with his angels. Amen. They beat the devil. The devil does not have a place in heaven. They threw him down. He was already overcame. Like conquered. Amen. When the Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. It is not talking about the war that took place in heaven. Because that war never included blood. They overcame him because he accused them day and night. Uh, okay. The war that took place in heaven. I know I told you. I know I told Listen, this is deep. Like I said to you and I warned you all of you. That when we start, let the Holy Spirit break it down for you. You see, the biggest problem with such a message is that you grew up knowing that. And I told you before, this is your whole life. And you'll see a preacher today telling you it's not in the Bible. It will frustrate you. And instead of putting on defensive mode, be humble enough to unlearn that which is not true and learn the truth. You yourself, you'll have to find a scripture. You'll have to. Forget about Google. Let, find a scripture. That says the blood is for protection. I will show you something right now. Let's go. So the Bible says they overcame him by the blood. But remember, the Bible says, and the devil was defeated already. Remember, Revelation 12, 7 says there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the devil. And the devil prevailed not. And he was thrown down because there was no place for him in heaven. Meaning he was defeated. 
Then it speaks about that old serpent, the accuser. So it means even when he was down, he still accused them. But they overcame him by the blood. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's why we see Michael in the book of Jude when he's fighting the devil against the body of, for, for the body of Moses, fighting the devil for the body of Moses. He doesn't say the blood of Jesus. He says the Lord rebukes you. So meaning the blood was used for a different thing. Because he used to accuse them before God. Mm. Accuse the brethren, so to say. Which is us. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. But they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Let me go down here. And if you don't hear me here, I don't know. I don't know. Um, let me see what scripture we can go to. Have we done Ephesians? Okay. If you don't hear Ephesians, the blood does not protect do Ephesians 2.13. 2, I believe it's 2.13. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. YouTube is getting it, yeah. But now in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Okay, let me read my vision. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So what is the, Christ, the blood of Christ doing? It is to bring us back to God. Amen. Brother Peter, let's go deeper. I, I'm doing the best I can. Do Colossians 1.20. Colossians 1.20, please. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. Yes. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, <laughs> by him... To reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Can I please read my vision? And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven. Whether on earth or in heaven. Remember the word that took place there. Making peace by the blood of his cross. No protection. When Jesus himself was in trouble, when I say trouble, when now they began to mock at him, he said to them, you, you don't have power unless the one you are given by God. He says, if I wanted to cause trouble here, I will call on my father and he will release legions of angels. It's in your Bible. He didn't say, I will sprinkle my blood. He didn't say, I will use my blood. Jesus says angels. So he says, if I needed help, I'll call on my father and he will release an angel. Hebrews 1, 13. Quickly because of time. Yeah. Chapter 1, verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Verse 14, please. Verse 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? What protects us? Angels. The devil knows it. You are the only one who doesn't know it. When Jesus was taken to the pinnacle of the mountain, to the top of the mountain, the devil said, throw yourself down. He shall send his angels. You, you, you see that now? Because the devil knows that the angels are ministering spirits. Whenever people got in trouble in the Old Testament, God sent an angel to protect them. You have never seen believers using the blood. That even Jesus himself, when he resurrected, you see angels. The angels rolled the stone. Hallelujah. When he comes back, he will come back with angels. It's shocking, like seriously shocking. If you were to agree with the Bible, not what, what, with what I'm saying right now, you realize that, you know what, the man is telling the truth because this is in my Bible. If you don't hear this one, I don't know what you will hear. Hebrews 10, 19. I've never done scriptures like this, eh? Like, it's because I was supposed to do two scriptures. It's because I want you to see it's never what the Bible is saying. It's 
Scripture interprets scripture. Quickly read my daughter. 19. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. Yes. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. What gives us boldness to enter? The blood of Jesus. Into the holy place. Meaning we go to the throne of God because of the blood, not having boldness to be protected by the blood. No. It's an error. When Peter was in prison in Acts 12, the Bible says in verse 7, and the Lord released an angel. When we say Satan, the blood of Jesus rebukes you, we are not necessarily addressing Satan, we are addressing sin. Let me quickly show you the quickest way of dealing with the devil, the book of James. And this is what the devil knows. This is how you deal with the devil. The blood of Jesus cleanses us, covers us, uh, our sins. I don't know how to put it. I will tell you the verse now. Hallelujah. Speak in tongues, please. Speak in tongues, please. Kala broshata bahan teke vehese teki la bahanta. Lin taka broshata kabaya. Balina non shata kabraya. Kale broshandila bahaya. Melendre veheska dia barosha. Speak in tongues, speak in tongues. Speak in tongues, speak in tongues, speak in tongues. Kis yo taka vraha satanina mahan taka vraha. Melendre vehesa. Please read for me. Please read for me. Can you check 5, 8 or something? James chapter 5 verse 8. Yes. But ye also patient. No, no, no. Check uh, 4, 8. James chapter 4 verse 8. Yes. Draw nigh to God. Okay. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. My vision will say, come near to God and God will come near to you. Uh-huh. Cleanse your hands, uh -huh. ye sinners, uh -huh. and purify your hearts, uh -huh. ye double-minded. Uh -huh. Now, continue. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. What vision is that, please? It's King James Apostle. King James. Yes, oh, Apostle. King James today is not nice to me, hey? Uh, ay, 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 ay. Can you get another one quickly? I want to, I want to close now. Okay, but you, okay, just go to verse 7. Let's hear the, because the, the, I'm looking for verse 7, but I wanted to show you what causes him to flee away from us in verses 8. Okay, let's go, verse 7. James chapter 4, verse 7. Yes. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Uh -huh. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Ah, did you see the simple method of causing the devil to flee? Yeah. It says resist him. But you can't resist him and he flees unless you submit yourself unto God. But how does that happen? Verse 8. Verse 8. Draw nigh to God. You draw nigh to God. And he but will what brings us closer to God? The blood. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You forgot it. Uh-huh. Let's go. Draw nigh to God. Uh -huh. And he will draw nigh to you. Uh -huh. Cleanse your hands, uh -huh. ye sinners. Ye sinners. But how do we draw nigh to God? We know that scripture says that we are now bold to enter the holy place through the blood of his son Jesus. So the blood was used to buy us back Amen. to God. There is no one scripture in the Bible. I don't know if uh, YouTube is still here. Zoom, I know you are not here. You are here, but you are not here. Please wave your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Reva, we're not about to be located now. Oh, okay. We are back in Bawa. The Bawa is back. <laughs> I've never seen Zoom like this. You know, there's somebody today. You know, sometimes the measuring stick to maturity towards the word of God. It's not how excited somebody is. Are, are, are we together? is the ability to understand deep things. Because I see somebody's like this. Like, what is he saying? It's because some people are giving. God bless everybody. <laughs> um, I have, uh, I'm, I'm reading comments on, uh, on YouTube. So if you're on YouTube and you are following, 
put fire emojis. Let me know what you think. Quickly put it on your, on your comment section right there. God bless you, Paul, for your offering, saying confirmation. You see, there are people who kind of understand. Um, uh, thank you for this revelation. That is uh, somebody there, uh, Winfred, I think. Um, truly making sense, facts. Um, people are getting it. Yeah, people are getting it. Like, seriously, people are getting it. Uh, holy, uh, Rich and Glovo is getting it. Uh, fire emojis everywhere. I see them. Eunice is getting it. Too much. You see, ah, I should have just done YouTube only. I knew YouTube was getting it. Hence, I was never concerned about YouTube. Somebody's like, I feel I don't know the Bible. <laughs> no, it's not about that. Remember, whoever feeds you guides your convictions. Like I said to you, it's dangerous to have an idea and find a scripture to match the idea. Scripture interprets scripture. You cannot support your claim or your argument using one scripture. The Bible does not contradict itself. It complements itself. So if I come to you with one scripture to make a big argument, either me, myself, I'm, 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 I'm in the wrong, or I might be in the right, but I don't have the whole truth. Scripture must interpret scripture. Amen. Consecration by the blood. That's it. Somebody say light has come. That's it. Flower of Jesus Christ. Uh, I believe this is my subscriber on YouTube because their comment section is green and they have a new life logo saying you are on fire. God bless you for subscribing. First, let's deal with that. <laughs> I'll be, de I'll be dealing with so much deep teachings on our members on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, on what, what is this? YouTube. Yeah, because my team told me that there are a lot of people that have subscribed. They have become members. So I need to come and do private sessions with you. Uh, WM WMJ says, deep. Have a lovely day or enjoy these blessings. Okay, amen. Total change of mindset. Exactly. Total change of mindset. This is what I wanted to somebody to say. Total change of mindset. Listen, there is no scripture. I know some of you are still saying no, no. There is no scripture. There is no scripture. We have uh, Mick watching from Rwanda. This is light. Yes. Yes. So we do have a uh, quite number of people that are being blessed here. Can I give one more scripture? Because, you see, I can, but uh, look at how um, Mesim Kwanaz is sitting. Mesim Kwanaz like, not today, Apostle. Mesim Kwanaz will be there receiving, jumping. Today's like, ah, Apostle, what's happening? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to give you one more scripture. This one unlocks everything. Unlocks everything. Hebrews 10.29. You want to understand the power that is in the blood? Go to Hebrews. Hebrews 10.29. Chapter 10, verse 29. Of how much sorrow punishment suppose ye shall he Shall he be thought? Can you read again? What vision is that? King James, read again. Uh huh. Hebrews chapter ten, verse twenty-nine. Yeah. Of how much sorrow punishment? Suppose uh -huh. mine ye, says how much worse punishment? Uh huh. Suppose ye shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden under foot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing? and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. So we see that the blood was to sanctify. Simple. Glory be to God. I can't think of any scripture at the back of my spirit to show you what the blood is for. 9.12. This one 
we used to say the lamp without blemish when we used to preach it. I, uh, back in the days, I think I was 15 years, I preached a message called the lamp without blemish. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what I was saying, but that message was powerful. I was screaming, jumping all over. And people said, this man is powerful. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> they did. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you people are taking me back. Ah. <laughs> really, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Pastor. It's been a long journey. Yeah, let's go. Neither by the blood of goats and, ah, yeah. and calves, mm. but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, mm. having obtained eternal redemption for us. Eternal redemption for us. But how did he do it by his own blood? Forget about goats and calves. Eternal redemption. Not eternal protection. Like seriously, like, oh Lord. There is no protection, Peter. There is no, you know, religion is so dangerous that something can become true, not because it's true, but because it has been said over and over and over. Those who are in our ministry and those who have followed me for years, you have never heard me pray that the blood of Jesus should protect us. Never. You have heard me dispatch angels. You have heard me ask God to assign angels. You, you see the difference right there? What are angels there for? When Daniel was in prayer and Gabriel was delayed, who did Gabriel call on? Michael. To come and fight for him so that he can go to Daniel. So there was war, but guess what? An angel is there. Because it is the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of light, This is the kingdom of Satan, which is the kingdom of darkness. We have angels of light, and there are fallen angels this side. So we are protected by the angels of light. So every time the enemy wants to get to you, it is then the angel of God. If you are driving, what protects you is the angel. Amen. That's why Jesus said, do not what? Despise. Matthew 18. Verse 10. Let's see, let's see. I don't want to talk about angels. Please. Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. Yes, ma'am. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. Yes. For I say unto you yes. that in heaven... Their angels do always behold the face of my father. Everyone is an angel according to Jesus. God an angel. Glory be to God. What does Luke 16 say? And you read from verse 23 quickly. Let's go to the rich man and the poor man. Luke chapter 16 verse 23. Yes. And in hell he lift up his eyes. Read 19, 20 please. Verse 20. Yes, ma'am. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, yes. which was laid at his gate, uh -huh. full of sores, yes. and desiring to be fed 21. with the... 21. 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Yes. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his, his sores. Uh -huh. And it came to pass uh -huh. that the beggar died. The beggar died. What happened? Uh -huh. And was carried by the angels. What was carried by the angels? Do you see now? Amen. Why? Because angels are ministering spirits. So the blood is there dealing with sin once and for all. Then angels are there dealing with the devil and anything that is coming to harm you. Do you see that now? That's why we have angels of war. So what are these angels of war for? What are these angels of war for? So if you read Revelation 12 verse 11, that says they overcame him by the blood. It's because that time they overcame him while he was accusing, meaning he had something against them. And when you read it, it says, and by their words of what? Testimony. And Revelation 19.10 says what? Read it quickly. Let them hear what the testimony is quickly. Because you can hear by the words of their testimony, but what is the testimony there? 19 verse 10 and I fell at his feet to worship him and he said unto me see thou do it not I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus worship God 
For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, the testimony they used, the Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, prophecy. right? Now, the testimony they used is the sure word of prophecy. Peter says we have more sure word of prophecy. So they were telling the enemy what Jesus has done. More sure word of prophecy. Where you tell the devil that you have been blood, bought by the blood. Amen. You are forgiven Amen. because of the blood. Amen. That is a testimony. Come on, brothers and sisters. Amen. And the Bible calls what is written here a, a more sure word of prophecy. Amen. Cecilia. I believe uh, today, a lot of people are like men of God. We, we have been following you, but I can't. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's hear what Jesus said about his blood. What is uh, that? One day, sir. I'm dealing with you today. Let's hear what he himself, because what, you know there are people who are like, but that's not Jesus talking. It's Paul talking. <laughs> we have those people. Let's hear what the Lord said. Matthew 26, 28. The second time I preached, I preached on this one. In my, but the second, life when I, second time when I started preaching, the second time I preached, I was preaching on this one. <laughs> Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. Yes. For this is my blood of the New Testament, ah, yeah. which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Why is it shed? For the remission of sins. Why are you using it for protection? He said it himself. Jesus said, it, this is my blood for the remission of sins. Who told you? Who told you? Who? Look for that person. Who? Because it's not in the Bible. One guy came to me and said to me, I've heard you preach, but I've not heard you preach about tithe or giving. I've heard your messages. They bless my because you go back to the word. You, you, you show me the word. No jokes in it. Why are you not saying anything about tithe? I said, it's because the day I will say it, you'll be like, nah, this man is crazy. Yet I'll be showing you in the Bible. Just like this message, the Holy Spirit had to prompt me. Hence, I put a warning before I even preached it. To say, ask him to give you revelation. I will give you scriptures. But I didn't think I was going to give you a lot of scriptures. You can go and check yourself as you are writing them down. Go and research. Don't just read an article. If you go on Google right now, it will be telling you how we use the blood of Jesus, sprinkle it. Where? It's a disrespect for you to be sprinkling the blood of Jesus. Oh, God. Wow. Even angels are shocked. So where, where, where do we play our part here while you are doing this? No wonder why some of you, when you are sleeping, you are being pulled by demons. <laughs> Reverend is laughing. It's because you are using a wrong defense, uh, defense system or mechanism. You are supposed to lock the door. You are opening the windows and the roof and everything. No. Glory be to God. I mean, the devil knows this. Told Jesus, throw yourself down. God will send angels. The devil is aware that angels are there to protect us. Amen. When you're about to have an accident and boom, something happens and an angel came. Mm. Let me say this once and for all. When the children of Israel, remember in the days of Joshua, they, they are busy fighting. The children of Israel are busy being mambaraskated. The Bible says, and the Lord released the help. Say, 
Yeah, when revelation hit your spirit every time, just remember saying, ay, ay. Chai is when you don't want to read it. Ay, 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 means I, I, I want more. Chai means ah, I'm okay with this revelation. <laughs> the Bible says, and the Lord released the hell. But when you read the Bible, it says, and God released the man of God. Another version says, an angel. And when Joshua saw the angel, the Bible says he took out his sword. He went, he wanted to strike the angel. And then when he was going towards him, he could not fit him anyway. He said, are you with us or against us? He said, neither. I'm an angel that stands in the presence of God. Another version says, I am in the side of the Lord. Ah! <laughs> if the Lord says, I smite you, I smite you. <laughs> if the Lord says, I smite this one, I don't choose side. I am in the side of the Lord. That's a very powerful statement. And the Bible says, and when Joshua had that, he said, Mama Mia. My man went down on his knees. Because now he realized an angel was released. And Joshua looked at the sun. People don't know how it all started. And he said, hold your peace until we finish our enemies. But it was after an angel was released. Because even if he commanded the son, right, without the presence of the angel, they were going to be defeated because they were being def defeated. Are we together? When the king of Assyria sent a letter to Hezekiel, the king of Judah, and said, surrender right now because I've conquered Jordan. I've conquered the Egyptians and their gods, the Medunes and everything, I've conquered them. Who are you? Because you have no allies now. Submit yourself to us. And the Bible says, Hezekiel took the letter, went to the house of the Lord, put it on the altar. And the Lord heard his prayer. He sent prophet Isaiah. Prophet went there and said, Thus said the Lord, none of their arrows shall touch you or your people. The Bible says, outside their their, their, their gates. The Assyrians were about 167,000. An army. That's a big army, isn't it? They camped there. The Lord caused confusion. We know the story, right? Amen. The Lord caused confusion. We know the story, right? Amen. But the Bible says, in the early hours of the morning, God released one angel. How many? One. And when the angel landed, they all died. One angel. One angel. I said one angel. And they all died. That's why you should never be ignorant when it comes to the ministry of angels. The blood of Jesus is so powerful that death, sin has no power over us. We have been bought. Hallelujah. When God looks at us, he sees Christ. God loves us. Ah, Patrick Dow is getting it. I believe. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I think I'm done here because it's, it looks like this has now become a decoration. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I believe we have been blessed. Oh, yeah. I would love to believe that. I would love to believe that. Hallelujah. Remember, even those who were in uh, after rapture. Okay, read Revelation. Ay, Apostle, you're not going to finish. Read Le Revelation 7, verse 14. Last scripture. I'm closing my Bible. In fact, I've, I was not even reading it. <laughs> Sister Nongas Mulo was reading. Let's go. Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. I'm closing my Bible. Let me close it so that we know we are done. Yeah. And I said unto him, yeah. Sir, thou knowest... And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation uh -huh. and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Washed their robe and made them white. Yeah, in the blood of the Lamb. So the blood washes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans 5. I've closed my Bible. Where are these scriptures coming from now? Oh, Apostle. <laughs> I want you to know the Bible. I want you to know the word. I want you to know. Listen, be so serious about the word of God that you know where to find what. 
Romans chapter 5 verse 9. Yes. Much more than being now justified by his blood, uh -huh. we shall be saved from wrath through him. We shall be saved from wrath. Another version will say we are going to be swept from the wrath of God. So his blood justifies us. <sighs> say glory. glory. YouTube, let me see you. I believe that you have been blessed today. Amen. The reason why I believe the Holy Spirit released me and sent me here to talk to you about this today is because the days are dark. The days are evil. The Bible speaks about the belt of truth. Meaning you will be only naked if you don't know the truth. Because the belt will help you to balance the armor. Without the belt, the armor will fall. And that's the belt of truth, remember? The breastplate of righteousness, remember? So in the armor, the belt balances everything. And that's the truth. So if the enemy strips you of the belt, the armor will fall down. You'll be naked. You'll be exposed. Hallelujah. It says you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Because of the truth, ye shall be free. So it is high time we know what the Bible say rather than what did our pastor say, what did our grandmother say. The days are dark. The reason why Christians are not prevailing it is not because God is not a loving father. He is. It is because, that's why James says, ye ask amiss. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's because one is shooting using blanks. Thinking the enemy is getting hurt. And the enemy likes it. When a message like this comes, he causes you to fight it. Because he knows once you know this truth, there is no going back. He causes you to feel angry for no reason. Yet it's just the word of God. Feel disturbed, yet it's just the word of God. Hallelujah. And if you are there and you are feeling like, ah, there is an error, no problem. I stand to be corrected. Hallelujah. I'm available. Call me and say, look, or send me a message. And say, Here's the scripture here. This is what it means. This what... Show me in the Bible. I've showed you, I don't know how many scriptures, maybe more than 40 scriptures today. Showing you verse after verse where the Bible talks about the blood. Different visions so you understand. I believe God is preparing the church for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because when we started this sermon, this series, we started it on rapture. Then we went to the return of the Nephilim. Then we went back also to the return of the Nephilim. Then we touched a little bit on the revelation going to the mark of the beast and the river Euph uh, Euphrates. Then we went back to rapture. When we went to the last signs before rapture, you see, we were in rapture and it was too deep. Then we went, what does it mean to be a Christian? Then it, we went, what does it mean to have the Holy Spirit? Amen. Then last week, who is the Holy Spirit? Do you see that now? And before that, there was another week where we did what happens when you don't pray. That's where it all started. What happens when you don't pray? You see what I mean? And now we are talking about the blood of Jesus. Come on, church. God is preparing us. Now see where he's had me. I want to pray for all of you before you leave. I want to pray for you before you leave. I want to pray for you before you leave. I want to pray for you before you leave. If you are sick in your body, God is going to heal you. God is going to deliver you. God is going to set you free. If you have been trusting God for deliverance, your mind from wandering, God is going to deliver you today. I believe that if you are here and you are not saved, there is so much grace in this place that God himself will 
forgive you and he will remember your sins no more. Glory be to God. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. All you need to do is to open for him and allow him to come in. He will come in and dine with you and you will dine with him, says the Bible in the book of Revelation. I believe that when Paul said, you foolish Galatians, who bewitched you? You started the journey in the spirit. Now you're about to end it in the flesh. It's because most people start the journey in the spirit, but they end it in the flesh. But I believe that you here today, you'll be revived. Your spirits already are revived. Not only are you revived, but your spirit man is awakened. And not only that, your mind is transformed. And your life shall never be the same again. And I want to quickly pray for you, if you can agree with me by lifting up your, your right hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man, every woman, under the sound of my voice. That your will will prevail in their lives. And you will do as you please with their lives. Father, I pray that the light of your word will shine in their lives. Shine even in their paths. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I decree that all that are sick right now, healing power is touching them. Healing power is touching them. They are being healed. They are being restored. Pain go. Diseases, sicknesses leave. I rebuke you now. That is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You have no place in that body. Go and don't come back. Those that are oppressed and tormented, I set them free. I separate them from whatever that has been tormenting them. I declare peace that surpasses men's understanding in their lives. In everything that they do, let there be peace. In the name of Jesus, those that father are in a season where things are not coming together. I stand as an apostle in the apostolic grace and I declare, peace be still. In your life, let there be peace. Let everything make sense. Let things that were not working together work together from today. May the Lord mark a new thing and a new beginning in your life. That even in this month of seeing visions, that your spiritual life will take another turn. That you begin to see, not just for others, but to see and understand the will of God concerning your life. For nothing shall take you by surprise. I declare and I pray for all seers in this place. That let the seer anointing be activated in them. That Father, they shall begin to watch. They shall begin to warn. They shall begin to tell. They shall begin to guide. In the name of Jesus, I pray for strength for all intercessors in this place. I pray for strength for all intercessors. Intercessors, hear the word of the Lord. Do not be weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall harvest. I pray for all givers. Do not be weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall harvest if you faint not. I refuse on your behalf to faint. Even in this walk, as you walk with God, I declare and I decree, it shall be great to serve God. It shall be an honor to serve God. It shall be a privilege to be called his own. Not a burden to serve God. In the name of Jesus. Those that have spoken ill against your life, your destiny, your tomorrow, your progress. Right now, may they swallow their words. May those words never take shape in your life. May they never come to pass. I condemn them right now. I condemn those words right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you shall know Jesus. Know him for who he is, what he has done. I declare that even the people around you will see you and see Jesus. As you decrease, he shall increase. As you disappear, Jesus shall appear. He shall use your hands. He shall use your mouth. He shall use your legs. God himself will be made manifest through you. You shall become the testimony of God's glory. You shall take over your sphere of influence through the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Whatever you touch shall prosper. Whatever you speak, God shall put authority in your mouth. It shall be established. You shall speak once, they shall hear you twice. Your family is coming to light. Your family is coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ through you. In Jesus' name I pray. Just as Jesus prayed for the disciples that their faith shall not fail, I pray that your faith will not fail. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, that is so. Come on, say, that is so. Your faith shall not fail. You are of God. As I was praying in my spirit, this is what I picked up. This is what I picked up. I said it before and I'm going to say it again. If I put $1,000 here and I switch off the lights and I say look for it. You start looking for it and chances are you're not going to find it because you're in the dark. But if I come and I switch on the light and lo and behold, there is the $1,000 that you're looking for. It would be stupidity for you to think light created the $1,000. Because light did not create it. Light revealed it. This, from today until this coming Sunday, it will be days of revelation. In your dream, don't underestimate what God is going to show you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because I hear Jesus saying, I'm going to cause my face to shine upon them. And there's going to be so much revelation, even in your dreams. Revelation about even people that are around you. Don't be shocked when you see somebody that you know and you trust turn into something in your dream. However, interpretation is the most important thing. So it is important for you to expect the unexpected. I'm talking about good news. Why? Because God is going to... You see, there's so much light this week. I'm not saying... The other weeks, there, there won't be light. But because it's the beginning of a new thing, we shall see results like never before. And some of us, destinies will be rewritten right now by the power of the name of Jesus. Say with me, it is working together for my good. The glory of God will shine. I want to quickly invite everybody to our Sunday. You see, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. We were supposed to have our Sunday of something, but the Holy Spirit this morning spoke to me. In fact, not morning, afternoon, when I was in prayer breaking my fast. He said, this is Sunday of angelic visitation. And now, and now to me, it makes sense. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited because if you have never seen an angel, I'm excited. My God. If you have never felt angels move and work on your behalf, I'm excited. There shall be a visitation. Even in the church, angels are going to be present. Like never before. I'm telling you now, there's going to be deliverance like we have never seen before. There's going to be power like we have never seen before. Why? Because this is our Sunday of angelic visitation. Our church, New Life, uh, Runbeck, now we are fully six months. They're going for seven months in Runbeck. That place is full of God. You can't come there and go back the same. Number one thing that matters the most to us is the word of God. Definitely the word will transform you. Amen. Number two, the presence of God will actually, uh, the Bible says, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of you, shall vagorize, vitalize. When, the, when you get in there, your, 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 your mortal bodies are vitalized. Amen. Why? Because of the presence of God in that place. So I'm inviting everybody in Gauteng. You can't be in Gauteng and take a taking. It doesn't make sense. Praise the Lord, everybody. We are in Runback now. You are invited. 
This coming Sunday, angelic visitation. And here's the good news. From 8 until 10 when the service starts, I'll be having one-on-ones. I announced that at the church, in the church. We can't announce it on Facebook and YouTube and post it. It's going to be disastrous. Right? This is for our people who attend services. Anybody that would love to have a word with the apostle, rather talk to the apostle, or rather hear the mind of God concerning their lives. This Sunday, you have to register using our WhatsApp number. Free for free. Just have to register, and then you'll be told, uh, be present, and space is still there. So everybody, under the sound of my voice, make sure that this Sunday, you are in new life. If there is a Sunday where you have ever visited new life, or went to new life, whether you are in Cape Town, if you can, make plans. And this Sunday, bring all your documents. Whether it's business documents, bring them. The vision that you have written down, according to Habakkuk, bring it to church. I will breathe and I will pray for them. Because this Sunday, not only am I seeing, I'm on an assignment this Sunday. And I told people, I said, you know, it, we, we, we understand what God has put in us. It's not for us. It's for these people. Hence, we are willing to come at the eight, sit down, pray, minister to God's people. Are we together? Amen. And after that, we have another service. When in the service, I'll be ministering. It's going to be, it's going to be a strong prophetic service. So be present this coming Sunday. If you're a son and a daughter of new life, especially around, make a plan to be there this coming Sunday. Amen. And I believe Sister Pretty is making a plan as well with our people in Botswana. So if you are in Botswana this coming uh, Sunday, the church in Botswana will assist you transport-wise Maybe if you are used to, maybe I don't know how they do it, they will assist you if it's half or quarter, whatever that is, they will assist you. You know? This one's in Botswana, not people in the suit or other countries that follow us. In Botswana, this coming Sunday, will be here. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm excited about it. Be in the church. We are in Runbeck. God is at work in that place. The second announcement that I want to quickly make is that next week, we are having our school of seers and dreamers. Every time, every time my wife hears me talk about it, she says, I can't wait. Why? Because she was the first person to register. <laughs> Listen, this one, we have never heard it before. It's going to be too deep. You yourself, you'll be like, all along, God had put this in. So I was moving it because knowledge unlocks in the prophetic. 5% is the skill, the ability. 95% is the knowledge. That's why you had prophets who were prophets, but in the school of prophets. Amen. Hallelujah. So it is important for you to understand that the gift is the beginning of it all. Most of you are seers and are dreamers. This is a school of seers and dreamers. We have people, especially in the United States, it's, it's not even nice. They are registering like it's coming out of fashion. And before the space runs out, you need to register. You visit. If you don't know how to register and where to register, send us a WhatsApp. You have to be there. Especially if you are a dreamer or you are somebody who is a seer or you believe you are a seer. Register for this school. This will... God told me and I told you that this is the time for the seers to rise in the church and take their position. And I was telling our church that this time in this church, this is not Apostle Miss Church. This is the church of God. We are going to preach the word. We are going to heal the sick. If the spirit of God says something to somebody, even in the church, I will want to hear what is God saying. Because I will know this is God speaking. And I will know this is somebody's feelings talking. Or somebody's uh, messed up mind. But it's time for seers to rise in the church. Some of you, you did not understand yourselves for a long time. Now God wants to put you in your place. So register for the school of seers. Hallelujah.
Glory be to God. Make sure you are there. Make sure you are. You are there. Number three, because I'm announcing. Am I not announcing? Number three. I'm excited to announce that this coming Saturday, we are having youth on fire. Our young adult service, which is youth service. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. Glory be to God. Young people, be present. Saturday, physical church. Physical service. Now, number four. Say number four. Parents, stop leaving your children back at home. Come with them to church. I want every mother, every father, from this tomorrow, starting from tomorrow, to start lifting your children in prayer by their names. When the day begins and when the day ends, I know you pray for them, but this time you lift them up. Leave them up if you can fast, fast. Pray for your children. Yeah. The days are dark. Mm -hmm. I told you already about the scariest vision that I saw. One of the scariest visions that I saw. Last but not least, we are going to have our praise a -thon on the 29th and the 30th of May. <laughs> we are calling on all kingdom finances. So we usually have this two times a year. Hallelujah. This is the right time for you to pray, God, bless me and I will build you a house. Amen. And some of you, God has already blessed you and some of you, God is blessing you. Listen, praise a -thon is the most exciting moment in our ministry because we only have it two times a year. Amen. You know, we, you, you hardly hear us saying we are doing this, we are doing this. Last year we did praise a -thon and we did pledging. We built God a house in two months. Amen. That is insane, right? Amen. Two months. So, and from July, August, we had, we had never had it. Now it's going to be our first time, our first one this year. Praise the Lord, kingdom finances. Hallelujah. Whatever you have, because we have so many things that we have to do afterwards. We have cruises. You know us to be traveling all over the world. You know us to be on TV. You know us to be on all these platforms. You know us to be givers. Listen, this time around, we are going to take it to another level. While it's even in the church, we are going to strengthen when it comes to media, when it comes to this department, to that department, the church on its own. Listen, we are ready. We are available. God bless me, I will build you a house. Amen. Hallelujah. God told me something last year. He said, if you build me a house, I will build your house. Amen. Build me a house, I will build your house. Amen. So I'm excited about our Mikdash. So it's praise a -thon, but we call it Mikdash, as you guys know. Hallelujah. Meaning building God a house. Glory be to God. So it's a marathon of praising God with what we have. I'm excited. So if you don't know, you will see it, you'll understand it. It's exciting. People participate in it. I was talking to one of my uh, son, and, son and daughter, husband and wife uh, from the United States. And they were like, uh, last year we we're not happy, uh, dad, because last year we, we won. Yeah, we beat mom last year. Yeah, we beat mom. No, no, we did. Didn't we? Oh, everybody's quiet. No, we lost last year. We lost last year. So they were telling me that they are not excited about what happened last year. Right now, is it possible that you can talk dead and please inform people, especially those who are JJ? Because on our praise athon, it's JJ versus JD. Those who are born June, January to June in one group, those who are July, December. So when we give, you stay where you fall under. So we saw pretenders last year, and we don't want to accept that. People know that they are a JJ, but because mom was representing JD, a lot of people were pretending. And that, that thing is not nice. We need to know exactly, because we put it on records. And remember also, there are awards at the end of the year. In terms of praise -athon, we saw people receiving certificates. Even if you are international, you are somewhere in the United States, it will be sent to you with your trophy. It's an amazing thing to serve God. So because it's something that happens once in a while, participate in it when it comes. Somebody's asking, when is the school of Sears? 
is on the 18th to the 20th of May, and it's strictly online. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world. God bless you. I believe that uh, we have already given. If you have not given, we have our giving uh, platforms there that you can use in front of you. You can go ahead and just give God and honor God with what you have, especially in this service, because this is a service, uh, our Wednesday service. And if you want to become an online member, go to mizimzwaketinkredit.org and become an online member. And hey, we have a new YouTube channel, me and mom. Uh, this YouTube channel is strictly about relationships because God has really anointed us in that field as well. So we, we, we wanted to balance it on YouTube. Praise the Lord, everybody. So we have a new YouTube channel. It's called, uh, what is it called? Come on. Thank you. The Iron Family. Oh, my God. The Iron Family. You will see our picture there. Just go and subscribe. If you have not subscribed to the actual YouTube, it's an error. Go and subscribe. Amen. Glory be to God. So I'm excited that we have this new YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe. It's our YouTube channel. And I believe God there will bless you through what he has put in our spirits. Amen. I'm not out of good news. I'm just out of time. I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. New life us all over the world. We are one. And this is what I said last week as your man of God. We are now going to have June training the trainer free for free. Amen. Where we are going to train our international members as leaders in those places, even national members. You will be a leader of a cell group covering the whole province. Some of you region. It doesn't matter where you are. Listen, online, we have now put together online church because every Wednesday we are live. Praise the Lord, everybody. We have a physical church. We have an online. So you, become, you can become an online member and get ready, especially if you have been part of this church and you want to serve God, you want to be part of something. Send a message. Let us know. This is your church. You are part of this church. We have people getting anointing oil, getting their rest bell. Mm -hmm. As new life, you must have. It's very important. Getting their prayer shower from all over the world. Talk about Brazil. Talk about India. Talk about USA. I even have Kennedy there. I see he has his anointing, oil, uh, anointing water, I believe, from South Africa. Yet he has not been here. But he's in the U.S. How come? Because it's new life. He has ordered it. And it came to where he is. Glory to God. Yes. God bless you. I love you so much. And if you have not gotten the book of Apostle Mies about dreams, go to Amazon and get that book. It will help you a lot. Partners, thank you. And God bless. God bless everybody. See you Sunday. <laughs>